Hi, this is Ruth is Real, and um, I am beginning this special collection of videos. It started, or the desire to create it started about a month ago, um, and I wanted to share my experiences with people that may have complex trauma or complex PTSD. I am a survivor, and if you suffer from one of those diagnoses, I want you to know that I am right along with you and this video series was created for you. I wanted to tell you my story. Um, it is painful. It may cause you to experience some pain, but, pardon me, I promise you at every single ending, you will hear some hope that you need. So in order to get story, or to get story, um, to get started, and I will warn you, these videos are completely unedited. I want you to feel the raw power of this, and that's why it's called um, Ruth is Raw. So I was um, raised in a small southern city by two people that were um, very broken, very mentally ill. Um, my father came from a wealthy family. Um, he was a he was raised in a Christian family. His father was an elder at his church. Um, in fact, um, our family can trace their heritage back to the foundations of this one community church. It's very special. Um, my father had another child, um, and it was out of wedlock. And in order to, um, I guess, save face in their relationship, or um, just to save face in the family, um, he decided to marry the woman that he had the child with, which, which I think is admirable. But just because you have a baby doesn't always mean you should get married. The woman that he um, had the child with was also mentally ill and had a lot of trouble and, um, needless to say, their marriage did not work out. Uh, and this little girl, um, was, um, left mostly in a single parent situation with her mother. Um, after my parents, or I'm sorry, after those people divorced, um, he met my mother. My mother was in a relationship with a young man who, whom, with whom they had a child, and I'm not exactly sure of all the details, but from what I understand, this young man did not want to have a child, and um, he was also fleeing a military draft. So he left my mother, um, I believe. I know that he didn't want a child, and she sent her back to the United States, or he sent her back to the United States to have the child, and then he wanted nothing to do with her after that. So, um, at her court hearing for the divorce, this young man didn't even show. So my mother was a single mother without a husband, also. My parents met, and they got married, and my father found himself in a difficult situation where um, his in-laws wanted him to marry, uh, not marry, but um, adopt my mother's child. My dad did not want to do this, but he felt amazing societal pressure. Also, that is because my um, mother's father was the pastor of that church. So he begrudgingly um, adopted my brother, and that's actually began a terrible, terrible story. My family, um, be it as they are, um, care very much about their appearances. And I think most families did in that day and age. It was probably in the 60s, 70s. And so you stuffed your skeletons in a closet and covered it up. Now the problem with that is when you do it, you repress a lot of pain and memories and regret. And um, that's kind of what happened here. My father um, didn't know what to do with a child. 
Um, that was a boy who was high energy, and um, the father ended up uh, abusing him, hitting him. I witnessed my father throw him across the couch. Um, I also witnessed my father strangle my mother, or try to strangle her with the telephone cord. We had some very physical encounters. Um, so, being a little person, I do remember these stories. Um, in fact, they weren't stories for me. I saw them. They were truth. I remember the police coming to our house and waking my brother and sister and I out of our beds to make sure that we were okay. I remember um, our, our pastor, not my grandfather, coming to our house to check on us and pray with us. Um, they were very tumultuous times. I remember my father leaving and coming back. And I remember my mother leaving with all of us, going to a friend's house. And I think I was in fourth grade, third or fourth grade then. And, um, you know, we lived there for a week, maybe two. By the way, I said that this was a video that was raw and unedited. And here's my dog's butt. I just thought you'd enjoy knowing that. This truly is raw and unedited, so I might just use this as a pillow. <laughs> yes, me. This is Mishka. She's a very sweet girl. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's not a therapy dog, but she is a hilarious dog. And I'll take that. So, that kind of lays the ground for the environment that I was raised in. I'm a very angry father. Uh, a mother who was um, deeply hurt. And, um, you know, I didn't, haven't even mentioned my half-sister yet. My half-sister from my dad's first marriage, we rarely saw her. My father um, just kind of neglected her, never came to see her. Um, my half-sister tells me stories that um, she would be told that her... Um, dad was coming and she'd go outside and she'd wait for him and wait for him and then he would never show. Now I can't say the reason for that. You know, I can't say that it was that her mother told her to go outside and wait and give her false hope or if that was the truth and my dad never showed. I don't know what it is. But I do know that it has rocked her core and to her that is truth. So, just a lot of awful things. Um, so you might wonder, how are you still here? I wonder that myself. I wonder why I'm alive. And I have wondered how I have not ended my life. Well, I can tell you for sure, without a single doubt, that it is because I have found a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, many of you may say, well, that's fine for you. Um, I don't believe that. And you know what? I, don't, I think there are a lot of people that would say that as well. But I will tell you that without a doubt, my relationship with Jesus Christ has stopped me from ending my life more times than I can count on my one hand. I don't know, maybe five, maybe more. I cannot remember for sure. But... Um, Going back to the fact that he loves me unconditionally, then he will never desert me. He will never leave me. He's always there for me, and he calls me his. Has kept me from worse things. And I'm thankful. So, that's the beginning of the story. Um, I will walk into more of it with our next conversation. But until then, I want you to think about what things in your life are really and truly permanently there that will never go away, will never dis disintegrate, will never leave you? Think about what those things are. Thanks. Bye.